Hello from Sketch Data. Uh, in today's video, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to a new plugin we're getting ready to release. Um, it's kind of a combination of previous features you, we've seen in previous plugins and some new features. Here I'm running the latest version of SketchUp, the free version, and it's in Windows. So let's get started uh, with installing the extension. Since it's an extension, we can go to Window, Preferences, Install Extension. And I'm looking for an RBZ file. So I can highlight it, hit open. It'll give me some warnings. It tells me it's been installed. And so now, after I'm done with the install extension, I can enable it. I've turned it on, and um, it pops up with an end user license agreement, which I can accept and close. Also, a welcome screen, which I won't need to see again, but it kind of talks about what the different menu options what the icons mean. And I can hit OK. I won't need the debugging window. So now we have this new web toolbar, which has some uh, bigger icons than a normal toolbar, a little fancier. Uh, this one works well in Windows, but it, uh, because how the Mac version of SketchUp handles web dialogues, it won't work as well in the Mac version of SketchUp. So there is also a native SketchUp toolbar, Sketch Data. Uh, we'll need to turn it on again and uh, probably one more time. It's been installed on this computer so the toolbar there it is. Similar icons um, and then what we have is we have uh, the select can command which is no different than the normal uh, select tool and then we have a new flip icon where here we have we can rotate components around the z-axis the y-axis or the x-axis, which up here on the native toolbar is separated into to three buttons. Here we can toggle between 45 and 90 degree rotations, and we're down here. There's a spot where we can turn the toggle between 45 and 90. Um, when I'm inserting cabinets, usually just rotate around the Z, um, so I can rotate and be on different walls. If I'm building something custom and I'm rotating individual parts, then I can utilize the other features to quickly rotate and get the orientation of the part the way I want them. Um, then we have a copy component feature, which uh, I'll show when I start laying out cabinets, how that's different than um, like the normal copy function. We have options, which will allow us to modify dynamic component options, very similar to the one that's built into SketchUp. But there are a few features. Um, we have an attribute window, which will allow us to modify component attributes over multiple uh, dynamic components, or also look at uh, attributes that are nested or, or are not on the first level of the component. In the case of Sketch Data cabinets, um, there are attributes that I want to modify that don't reside on the parent component, like maybe door style information, things like that. And then the toolbox are um, other features that uh, we want to include, functions and things like that, that we don't want to uh, put up on the plugin window make it uh, easier to get to. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to draw a simple wall here real quick. I'm just going to offset it back and close it up so I can push pull it up. So now I just have a, a wall we can work with and we can start dropping cabinets and see how some of these features work. Let's uh, go to the sketch data collection. And we'll grab uh, a base cabinet. And it drops off the standard, so I'm going to just bring it out. So now I have it along the wall. We can also bring in another cabinet. And based on that insertion point, we have some reference points we can snap to. Um, let's say, for example, I want to put this base cabinet along this wall. It's not rotated correctly. Now, I could use the axis command and change my axes and put my red axis along here and start dropping cabinets and the cabinets are rotated correctly. I can also just do a move and a copy. And if I rotate along the z-axis, I can quickly rotate it into place, too. Um, it all depends. You know, if I'm doing a long 
layout of cabinets, then I may uh, rotate, set my axes. If I just need to rotate one or two, or sometimes components coming in from the warehouse, you don't know how they're going to come in, so you need to quickly rotate them, and that's what this is for. Again, mostly with, in this case, I'm just going to use the Z, but I could rotate along the Y also. Again, not as pertinent in this situation. Um, if we look at the 45 rotate, I maybe want to move and copy this. And for some reason, I want to put it in the corner. I can change to 45, and I could rotate it around until I got to where I wanted it to be. So let's take a look at the next feature on here is the copy component. Um, I can do a move and then hit the control key on Windows and I can do a copy this way but it's harder to get my base point, it's not easy to select. I could drag another one from the warehouse or I could go and look at my components in here and bring another one in. But uh, one thing to note, for example inside SketchUp has a feature where if I move this component, let's say, off a different spot than the base point, so for example these cabinets had a base point that was in this corner so it makes it easier for them to snap next to each other. If I move this cabinet and I pick this corner, we'll move it over four inches. Now when I go back and drag another one in, see how now it's redefined the base point in that lower corner? Um, that's not as useful as in some cases that we'd like it to be because I want to go back and start using this point again so I can uh, snap off the previous or the predefined base point of a component. So if I were to highlight this and I want to make a copy and I want the base point to be where the component base point is, if I use the copy feature it highlights it and it has my normal base point where I want again. So if I want another one of these, rather than going back and trying to find in the component browser, I can hit copy component and drop another one in and the base point will be reset to the normal base point of the component. So that's what this copy feature is. Um, it hopefully helps it, makes it easier to uh, reproduce a component and also resets the base point to what we're more used to dealing with, which is the base point or the insertion point of the component. Let's see what other features we need to look at. Uh, okay, so we have redraw all components. That's a feature that was in a previous plugin and sometimes there's the need to just redraw or regen all the dynamic components, especially if I were to look at when I bring in materials after I've started uh, laying out cabinets. We have a, a sketch data library set up to use a material swatch so I can highlight it. I really don't need to bring it in once I've simply selected it. Now it's populated my model with these predefined material names which the sketch data library is set up to use. For example, SD face D is a sketch data material. It stands for the face of the doors. And you can see I brought these materials in but none of these cabinets are taking on that material. And let's also, uh, well, what we'll do is we'll just do a regen all, a redraw all the dynamic components. So it took, a, now they're all brown. So now they're all taking on this new material swatches. And we can come over here and we can actually select a texture image. We can make them all wild cherry. And so now you can see they've all taken on that new material green. So that's the redraw all. Um, the second plugin or feature that's from a previous plugin is we want to replace these. Let's say I want to replace the drawer pools. So I can drill in here, highlight the drawer pool, I can right click, and I have an SD replace dynamic component. And I can pick a different pool. I don't know if I get to let's see. So now I can see some images. So we're going to pick a different pool. Um, We'll pick this one here, and it's going to replace all the pool drawer pulls. So I can go through, and now you can see the drawer pulls are replaced, but the base pulls weren't. Um, I guess there are occasions where we'd want a knob on a drawer front and maybe a pull on a base door, and then the wall door is the same thing. They're different. So I could come in and put in basically several different types of pulls, or I can make them all the same with that replace pull component. Um, so let's see, we've looked at the flip, the copy, we've looked at uh, redraw all, and we looked at the replace. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, another new feature. Normally we would change dynamic components 
with the built-in component window. So if I want to go 22, so it changes to 22, I can change it to right hand, things like that. We've added another dialog, which is our own version of the component options window. And um, it's very similar. Um, the same kind of questions that you'll see over here on the other one. Uh, one of the things that works here when I'm working with, especially with fractions, is over here I can't deal with, like a, if I wanted 22 and a half, I have to type in 22 and a half. Doesn't work over there. Uh, a lot of cabinet makers are used to working in fractions. So if I come over to our option window, I can apply changes. And so now you can see it changes over to decimal, but they're able to work in fractions over here. We can change to left hand, just like we do over there. Um, some of the other features, and I'm going to move this out of the way, that we added to our dialog was the ability to do the layer, the definition name, and this, this note here. So it's kind of all in one spot. Uh, so you can see it keeps them sync. So this is some more data that we can use for exporting, um, naming it. Nice thing about doing names is we can give it different names and it doesn't create new instances of the component. So we kind of combine some additional information and we also added the ability to do fra fractions, which is somewhat important um, for a lot of cabinet makers uh, who like to deal with fractional information. Um, so if we open this up, so, if we also look at this screen, we have the ability to do uh, sorting. So I'm going to bring in a component. bring in another component and I'll bring up the component window you can see now we have the ability to group things and sort them differently compared to the typical component window normally you have to kind of currently support or sort uh, attribute names or attributes by giving them different names and in this case we're going width depth and height you can see over here we've done width height and depth and uh, and we also added some group highlighters so we can kind of put things in little different categories. And how that's done, here's my component options, that icon. This will actually bring up all the attributes that are um, used on that product. And now this is something you can't see normally in the free version of SketchUp. You would need the pro version so you could see all the attributes and also see their formulas. So for example, uh, if I look at this group size, and I hit the edit attribute, I can see it's, uh, here's a sort code. This number sorts it in the right sequence. I can set its units, I can set its rule, I can see this attribute, and then I've set a label for it. And then I can also go and look at this length x, so I said I want that to be number 11. So that's just another ability to sort it. If we look at the length y, it's 13, so this is how it's sorting it. If we scroll down, we see things that have formulas. So now you can see the formula. Uh, we're still working on this part of it. So in the first release, this will probably be a view only. Um, I haven't got quite the bugs worked out to be able to maintain dynamic attributes. Uh, but we have the display rules, the units. Uh, we're working on a formula editor. So you can see the built-in functions and bring them in and maintain and build your own formulas and make your own attributes. We can go back and look at the component options. So again, that's kind of different than what you would see here on this screen is the ability to sort and do things differently. Um, we're working on this right now. These are all the attributes. And um, for example, this is a list box, so I could add additional values And 
if I were to open that up over here, you can see we've now maintained uh, or modified the dynamic attribute uh, using the free version of SketchUp. So we're hoping to give the ability to do some basic uh, dynamic attribute editing and maintenance in, in the free version. Uh, let's see, what's the next option here? So now we have information. So this would be uh, summary. These are things that you would see. This is uh, a user-defined form. So now we're looking at all the other attributes you'd see on that component that aren't dynamic attributes. Uh, warehouse ID, shadow, other information. We also have the ability now, if I put on a flag, let's see if this part has it. Okay, so now this has a user form. So by setting an attribute on that particular component with a subform, I can now look at a specific user form. So if it doesn't have a subform designated, for example, the cabinet, when we go look at the user form, we just see all the generic default attributes. If I go and have something with a subform defined, we can go in and the user form can be uh, set up to use a, uh, a custom form, which is just some JavaScript for data fields. So we can have custom data forms for particular types of parts. Looks like I'm running out of time. Um, so just wanted to give you a brief introduction. I will try to do another video to talk about, again, more of the options and these component attributes here and our toolbox features. Thank you for your time.